How's it going folks? Welcome back to Breakdown Inc. I'm Ender Call, and in this video I'm going to look ahead to the second leg fixture between Celtic and Bodo Glimt in the Europa Conference League. So if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed, this is the Breakdown Inc. It is a channel for all things Celtic and if you're not subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button below, like the video so more people can see them and leave a comment as well. I'll try to get back to as many as I can. So Celtic go into this game 3-1 down from the first leg fixture at Celtic Park. There's no away goals in the Europa Conference League, so Celtic need to score at least two goals to become level. If they score a third, then they can potentially go through to the next round against Bodo Glimp. Fairly simple stuff. These are the three things that I want to see from Celtic going into the second leg. So the first thing that I want to see from Celtic is a change to the starting lineup. I think we're all in agreement that Ange got it wrong in the first leg, trying out the Matt O'Reilly Tom Roger combination in midfield. It was an experiment, it didn't work, it wasn't the time to do it, and it backfired on Celtic. Celtic didn't have enough legs in the midfield, they didn't have enough trackers when Tom Roger was failing to get back, and it just didn't click. It wasn't the right time to make this uh, call for Ange, and it felt like he was meddling with a working system at the wrong possible time. Now, I said on the huddle breakdown that I, I felt Celtic were trying to score first and then hoping to control possession, but that only works if you score first, Bodo Glimp scored first, and Celtic were left with this makeshift midfield that didn't really work out. So the changes that I would make to the starting lineup start in the defence. I'm taking Greg Taylor out of left back and starting with the same back four that started against Dundee at the weekend. Juranovic coming in at left back, Ralston coming in at right back, Cameron Carter-Vickers and Starfelt in the middle. Now, I don't particularly like having a right-footed left back in the team, but if I'm going to have a right-footed left back in the team, I would rather it to be someone like Juranovic because he's versatile, he's, he's smart, he's got good positioning and he's got good recovery pace as well. So if he does get forward and Brodo Glimt are on the counter-attack, I do believe he's good enough to have that recovery pace to get back and provide a bit more defensive solidity than Celtic had against Bodo Glimp last week with Greg Taylor playing that a left back. Into the midfield, I would have Cal McGregor as the number six, Matt O'Reilly as the number eight, and Hatate as the box-to-box -box player. Now, I do think he also provides a bit more defensive solidity for mid, uh, from the midfield for Celtic because he's got much better recovery pace than the likes of Tom Rogic. He is able to sniff out danger very well and he finds himself into positions where he can intercept the ball rather than getting involved in duels quite often. So that's why I would have Rio Hatate in the midfield. And then moving forward to the forward line, Giacomacus, after his hat-trick, starts in the middle. I think Jota will start on the right and Dizan Meda will come in at left wing. Now what I want to see from them is a bit more creativity, a bit more drive, Giacomacus getting into the right areas and putting the Budaglim defence under pressure because we didn't do that enough last week. The second thing that I want to see from Celtic is from the wingers. Jota on the right, Meda on the left. I want to see a bit more creativity coming from the Celtic wings this week. Now what Bodo Glimt did against Celtic last week to the wingers was they exposed them, they stood them up, they said come at me, take me on and essentially they just dispossessed them. Abada was dispossessed quite a lot on the right wing and Jota didn't have his usual high standard of game. So with Dizan Meda on the left, Jota on the right, a right-footed right winger, I think Celtic are going to get more crosses into the box. I think Maida will provide something that Abada and Jota don't do on the wings, that is high-intensity presses on their fullbacks and onto the keeper as well. Put them under pressure high up the pitch and engage them early on in the game. Get crosses into the box, early crosses into Giacomacus and try get a goal that way rather than what we tried to do last week, which was a lot of passing a lot of passing and moving the usual celtic game plan but when the first game plan doesn't work what are you trying to do try plan b and i think that's what celtic are going to do they're going to play a similar game plan to what they played against dundee united get plenty of crosses into the box of jackamacus and hope that he can get one of his natural one touch finishes to score early against Bodo Glimt and bring this tie into a competition currently a 3-1 but a glimpse are comfortable if celtic score early suddenly they're on the back foot and suddenly Celtic are on the front foot. Put Bodo Glimt under pressure very early by getting crosses into the box into Jack Marcus and put Bodo Glimt under pressure. Third and final thing that I want to see from Celtic against Bodo Glimt is essentially just intensity because I felt like that has been lacking at times, especially when called upon. The Rangers game, the Rangers win, 
was such an emotional roller coaster. It was such an intense performance. It was the performance of the season by a standout mile. But we haven't been able to replicate that since. We have haven't had that intensity since. And I firmly believe if Celtic bring the intensity that they brought into that Rangers game into this Bodo Glimp game, Celtic will blow blow Bodo Glimp out of the water because they won't be able to match it. But if they bring the same intensity as they brought last week against them, I don't think they're going to get anything in this game. You know, they need to move the ball quick. They need to move them fast. They need to press the Bodo Glimp players. They need to make them uncomfortable. And they didn't do that last week. So that's mainly what I would like to see. Make the Bodo Glimp players prove that they're worthy of their 3-1 win. And it wasn't a fluke. Celtic were sloppy last week. It wasn't a good display. They didn't seem to have the intensity that they usually have. So what I'm hoping from Celtic is essentially just a good performance. Prove that you're a team that deserve to go through here and that you want to be in European competition after Christmas and that it's not just a domestic season for Celtic in terms of what they're going for. Celtic have the potential to go through in this competition, but they need to show that they have the drive to do it and they're able to show that they are actually, they've got some bottle about them, you know, the Ross County win, the Dundee win, the Dundee United win. They've shown that when they need a result, when they need to win, they can do so. They can pull out that goal. They can pull off the performance. And especially the Rangers one. Celtic nailed down a marker on Rangers that day. And that's what Celtic need to do against Bodo Glimp. They need to put down a marker and say, we're the better team here. We deserve to go through. And if they turn up in the same manner in which they turned up against Rangers, then I I actually think Celtic will go through in this fixture. So that's the three things that I'd like to see from Celtic in the second leg against Bodo Glimt. What do you think? Do you think Celtic will go through? Do you think Bodo Glimt will go through? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And again, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do hit the subscribe button below and help the channel grow. It is massively appreciated. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll chat to you later. Good luck.